All right. This is Nancy Balaban on uh, September, uh, October 7th, interviewing Joy Dreyfus. Okay. So I'm going to put this right here. So we need to talk loudly. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I think you just have to talk normal. So first I'm going to ask you some personal things. All right. Okay, yeah. Like, um, when did you move to Hastings? Do you remember what year? 1953. 1953? Yes. Okay. And um, why did you decide to come to Hastings, of all places? Well, it was in Westchester, but it was low-key. Uh-huh. And we could find an inexpensive house. Uh-huh. And that's why we decided to come. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, where did you come from? Where were you living before that? We were living in New York. Yeah. On Central Park West. Yeah. In a great big apartment, bigger than the house. We <laughs> that's funny. Um... Uh, I'm going to close the door because that's going to be on the tape. Okay. And um, where did your family come from? Your your birth family. Uh, I was born in Plainfield, New Jersey. Yeah. And my family all lived there. Okay. Um, what did your did your parents both work? Did your mom work? Did your dad work? Yes, my family had a children's dress business but manufacturers and everybody except for me worked at the business your mother too yes my mother uh, was very involved with the promotion and she would arrange uh, what do you call that when people get all dressed uh, like a fashion show fashion shows oh. the dresses were called chabettes and they were for chubby girls. I inspired them. My father was the designer, and I was the inspiration. Were you chubby? Yeah. Oh. But since my father thought I was perfect, I, I see. got chubby then, so most of the nation's girls. So their best customers were, uh, what's the name of that store for heavy set people? One fancy store on Fifth Avenue, Lane Bryant. Oh. And they sold children's clothes, too? They sold children's They had a shop at department. Uh-huh. Well, that's interesting. Um, what about George? What about his family? Where did they come from? Well, his mother came from France. Uh-huh. Um, they had lived in New Rochelle for many years. Mm-hmm. And his father came from Philadelphia, I think. And I never knew his father. Oh, he had died? Yeah. Uh-huh. Did his mother speak French to him? Yes. And he spoke French to her. So he was fluent in he French. Was bilingual. Yes. Did you speak French? Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, where did you meet George? I met George in the building that we lived in in New York. Uh, on uh, 56th Street and 9th Avenue. Uh-huh. It was a brownstone. Is that what you call it? Brownstone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four-flight four walk-up. Mm -hmm. He was on the second floor and I was on the first floor. And my friends were on the fourth floor. And they had a party called, it was like a gambling party, kind of. Uh -huh. And both of us refused to go. We didn't know each other, but we both refused to go. So after the party, I went up to see my friends to see how they had made out with the party. And they had uh, some coffee cups. Did you ever hear the story? Yeah. They had some coffee cups that were quite nice. I said, where'd you get those? And I said, we borrowed them from the boys that live on the second floor. Men who live on the second floor. I said, well, I'll return them. And that's how I met George. <laughs> Returning his coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
why did you both decide not to go to a gambling party? Oh, it was, it seemed sort of tawdry. Oh. Uh-huh. Spill your stuff up. So, uh, um, what what kind of work were, were you and George doing at the time that you met? What kind of work was I doing? Oh, I was working at the United Jewish Appeal. Oh, what, what were you doing? I worked for the junior division, which was, the idea was to find rich, young kids and get them interested in something other than themselves. Huh. And I was very unsuccessful. I didn't like it doing it at all. Uh huh. And George was in the X-ray business. He was a uh, like a technician, uh -huh. salesman. Oh. Uh. Um. How how soon after you met did you decide to get married? We met. I think in. February and maybe got engaged in March, April, May, May. Oh, maybe it was very soon. Uh huh. So it was a quick very meeting and and decision making. Yeah. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Um. So, uh, I I wanted to ask you a few questions about some of your own interests, like doing crossword puzzles. How did that develop? Not an overwhelming interest. Where, where did that come from? I seem to recall that you did crossword puzzles. Uh, yeah. That it was something you enjoyed. Yeah, well, I still do. Oh. Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Oh, it was like always, it was something you always did? Yeah. Uh huh. Even as a teenager? I doubt it. Oh. <laughs> um. But then you've done, you've developed other interests, like you were teaching. Oh, yeah. You want to I, say something about whole, teaching and writing? I had a whole career after that. Yeah. Um, a big career. I mean, I went to work at the Allen Mother Institute, which was the big uh, art who grew out of Planned Parenthood. Mm hmm family planning movement, and I was the director of research and planning from 19, 1968 to 1984 or something like that. So in other words, you were living in Hastings when you were working at Allen Guttmacher? Yeah, commuting. Commuting? Yeah. On the train? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did they run on time? Yep. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And how how many years were you, were you doing that? Eight oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, from fifty eight to eighty four is a long 68. time. Sixty eight. Oh, sixty eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Got it. Before that, I went back to school. I got a master's in urban sociology. Where did you do that? Sarah Lawrence. Oh. Okay, so th after I moved to Hastings, I worked in the, actually I worked in the school. But my first job, I, I've gotten that. I was the uh, my job was to be like the organizer to try to pass bond issues to support the school. And uh, was that a paid job or a yeah. volunteer? I worked for, it was a paid job, and I worked for the superintendent, uh -huh. who was, what was his name? Anyway, it was a very fun job. The idea was that we would know exactly how everyone was going to vote. Everything had to be seen by a volunteer. Uh-huh. How long did, for how many years did you do that? I think about two. Oh. Three. Uh huh. And and did that prove and to be a way to get the bond issue yes, passed? Bond. Yeah, that was very important. And then after that, I decided to go back to school, and I went to Sarah Lawrence for graduate work because it was a little, it was like the drive there and park my car. Yeah. And then I got a 
state scholarship. Um, it didn't cost me anything. To go to Sarah Lawrence? In fact, I think I got paid. I think I had some kind of job there. Mm -hmm. Doing? Nothing too dramatic. What's I doing? You don't remember. Um, was that did did that make a difference in terms of your future employment? Not none whatsoever. <laughs> what did it did it make a difference? In fact, I wrote my thesis was about the Jewish community in Washington What was the subject? So they gave me an A. What? So they gave me an A. But what was the subject? I, maybe it was family funding. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, at some point, I guess it was right after that. Maybe it was the thesis. I started developing estimates for for. Uh, number of young people who are girls who are at risk of getting pregnant uh -huh. because they didn't have uh, access to Thanks. family planning. That's how I got the family planning field. Uh -huh. I just wrote all this stuff on my own. Uh, I remember I fell in love with the census. So I did all this work up using the census data uh -huh. on my own and then Fred Jaffe, who was the president of the Alan Guttmacher Institute, found a copy of it, or somebody gave him one, and that's how I got involved with Glenn Farrell. He got a hold of your of your, the work you've done at Sarah Lawrence? No. Uh, it was really work I had done on my own after Sarah Lawrence. Oh, I see. Okay. And that sort of led to the job yep. at Alan Guttmacher. Right. And then... Do you want to... I will. And then, um, what would you like t to say about the work that you did after that? Oh. After, because you said you left in 84, so... Well, then I was very fortunate, because I had very good contacts with, well, particularly with the Carnegie Foundation, and I think it was, I don't know for how many years they supported me to write what turned out to be I wrote seven books altogether. And it came out of that work that started at Alan Guttmacher, is that what you're saying? Was that the genesis? Well, I got into some teenagers while I was there, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And then you did some teaching. Was it uh, related to the writing that you were doing? I must have started teaching while I was still at AGI. Because I, I taught at the Columbia School of Public Health. I'm not where I got parking there. <laughs> um, I taught stuff about how to, how to, how to organize family planning programs. Mm -hmm. And then later stuff about teenagers. Mm -hmm. Did you do that for many different semesters or a limited period of time? No, I did it for many years. Many years. And I became a full, a full professor. Uh huh. Why? Without ever having to go through. What? Well, yeah, I, I, they, how did they make me a full professor? Well, they did. I'm an adjunct, an adjunct full professor. And do, was that your main teaching at Columbia? Yes, yeah, I also for uh, Michigan School of Public Health. Um, so did they you used to fly me out there? Uh huh. For a semester or something. Did you do that as often as at? No. But it was more occasional. 
Yeah. Uh huh. But it was fun. And the students were great. Do you ever see or hear from any of the students from either of those teaching situations? You know, but when I came here, I was reminded yesterday of a friend who visited. I am not so trouble on it long ago, taught here at Harvard School of mm -hmm. Education. When, when you first moved here, you mean? Yeah, or a little before. And they said they had too many courses and they let us go after one semester. But I heard from all those students. Anyway, I had a lot of good work opportunities. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that you talked about a, a, a round table when you came here to Boston. Right. Was that connected in any way to Harvard? No, nope, it was. It was independent, it still is. Uh huh. I'm still on the executive committee. And what what were they uh, uh, devoted to? To promoting my concept of full service mm -hmm. community school. So have since that was one of your uh, major topics. Uh, in your writing, the full service schools, um, have you seen an expansion of that idea since oh, you very much so. first began to think about it? Oh yeah. And is it in different parts of the country? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that must be gratifying. Oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. So, do people still um, call you or ask for consultation about those issues? Somewhat, but I'm very limited in what I can do. So. Yeah, but you're still recognized as part of that movement. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't, don't do research anymore. Yeah. Um, do you want to say anything more about that? If I do, I'll, I'll, I will. <laughs> All right, as we go along. I mean, feel free to sort of change the topic if you think more about... Uh, your writing and the, uh, your career that I haven't asked you. Just say it. Um, uh, some of the other questions uh, relate to Hastings. I was because just going to say, what about Hastings? Yeah. Well, um, for example, one of the things that would be interesting to know is something about the local businesses that were there when you were living there? Where, do you remember where you shopped? Uh, what was the name of the supermarket on the corner? Was it the A&P at that time? What is it then? It's the A&P. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you go to any of the smaller shops to to go marketing? Yes, and I had a story about that. But shortly after I moved there, I went. There was a Owl's Market. Oh yes. But it was it was in a small place in the middle of town. Uh huh. And I went in and asked for something. And they said, I guess I asked for a veal. Yeah. And the, and the butcher said, this is not a veal town. This is a, what, what, would, what would Italians eat? Italian people Beef? eat veal. Steak, steak, I guess. Is oh. Do you remember where you had your hair cut? Do you? Um, do I? Yeah. No, where you had your hair cut? No. no. Where you had your... uh, I didn't have my hair cut in Hastings until recently. So maybe maybe you went somewhere else. 
or maybe you don't remember. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. What about repair for your house, like painting or stonework or things like that? Do you remember who did repairs? The toilet breaks? I just remember that the guy that takes care of me, Joe. J Joe? Yeah. Oh, the guy who helped Judy? Yeah. Uh -huh. Did he help you? Yes. Um, but uh, repairs to the house. We didn't have too many. Hmm. You didn't need a new roof or have the garden done? No. No. Um, did you belong to a synagogue? Uh, very, very briefly, I think we did. Briefly? We weren't active. Uh-huh. Jewish community, I opened. Not very much. Mm. Mm. Um. We were active politically. Yeah. What would you like to say about that? When we came to Hastings, we had virtually no Democrats. Uh-huh. Even though it was it was working class town. Uh-huh. And uh, we changed all that very rapidly. How? I how? That a lot of people moved in when we did. The, um, well, I guess they shut the factory down. Anaconda. Yeah. Uh huh. So, h how do you think you turned it? You said you think you turned it around. Well, we moved in '51, and I think '53. George was elected to the board of trustees. Uh huh. Along with four other people who were Democrats. Yeah. Or maybe less, but anyway, we sort of chased the Republicans out. You what? Chase the Republicans out. <laughs> you chased them out? And did you bring... How did you do that? I guess by reputation. I see. Um, it didn't last forever, especially for George, because there was a whole issue about public housing. Yes. Or it was called public housing. Uh-huh. What was it? Did you... Everybody was afraid that they would move in. <laughs> the Shifka? Hmm? The Shifkas? What did you call it? The Fatshas? <laughs> the what? So, the, it, what was it called if it wasn't called public housing? Do you remember? I mean, that was a big issue with, with George? Well, there was money available. Uh-huh. Oh. And he, he thought that the community should try to get some... Uh, urban, urban... Was it urban, urban renewal? Yeah. I see. And were you involved in that as well? Well, I supported him in what he was doing. Okay. So so you had a pretty active political life. Yeah, I was the president of the League, League of Women Voters. Uh-huh. When I was... Uh, I think 26 years old. That happened very soon after I got there. Uh-huh. So politics was very important to both of you. Yeah. Um, uh, I think there was some issue in the education uh, field having to do with the PTA and Decker. Were you involved in that? Do you want to say something about that? Is that for you? That was for you. Well, Harriet well, Roth, I told her you will call her back. She's not very close. No. I asked you about the Decker affair. Well, Esther Decker was married to Albert Decker, who was an actor. And um, there's a whole, whole thing about how they were communists, which they weren't. Mm -hmm. But 
the sort of accusation that she was, and she was nominated to become president of the PTA, uh -huh. and the anti-communists put up another candidate, so there was a big tension in the whole town. Ah. Uh. And at the very last minute, Esther withdrew from, withdrew from the whole thing. She was what? She withdrew from the Oh, she withdrew. Uh-huh. But it was a you know, national importance, sort of. Uh-huh. Bad, bad news. Did, what was your role in that? I guess we had committees, you know, in favor of Esther and, you know, stuff like that. But, did that have a lasting, any kind of lasting effect on oh, think, on the community? I think it really it was a very devastating occurrence in the community. Mm -hmm. In what way? Well, because it's antagonized. You know, people didn't talk to each other forever. Uh huh. This, uh, I guess Esther, uh, not Esther. What's her name? The woman who became the president of the PTA for the time being was sort of like a society lady. Uh huh. And, uh, it was wasn't a good outcome. I think there are a lot of things like that in Hastings that got things come and come and go. Mm hmm Well, you know all those stories. Well, but there were other. Um there were other issues uh, that I th think you might have been involved in, like the Youth Employment Service and the Southern Student. The second one, we The Southern Student. Yeah. Can you want to say something about that? Yeah, well, we, let's see. Well, we had a import kids, black kids from the South, live with us. I think it was a Quaker group that started it. Mm -hmm. And so the Southern student group was, a, was sort of the, the support group that raised money to help mm -hmm. do all this stuff. And like everything else, it was very successful for a while, and then it, then it wasn't. We had a boy who lived with us named Donald. Mm -hmm. Do you remember him? Yes. And you don't know what happened to him? I don't remember. You want to say? Well, it's very sad. He, uh, we managed to change his whole attitude toward life. So instead of being church-going, hard-working kid, he, by the time he went to college, he was a, like a you know, he was into drugs and stuff. Oh. And uh, he went to um, this school up here. Where, where was it? I get. But anyway, a couple of years after that, he, he, I guess he finished college and then he he went into the army. Uh huh. Um, he never really recovered from his exposure to drugs at, at college. And he eventually died at a very early age. I think he was in his 20s when he died. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't do him any favor bringing him up in Alabama, which is where he came from. Mm -hmm. Um. Were there other activities like I remember fair housing was was that something yeah. you were involved in that? Yeah. Can you say something about it? I don't remember. No. I know we were involved in that. Um well what about what about other kind of community activities was it there? We were big tennis players. Tennis players. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Enthusiastic supporters of the tennis courts on Euclid Avenue. Uh huh. 
Okay. What else? What else were you active in in the community? Was George there? George was active in the music stuff. Music. There was a chorus. Oh, a chorus. Good, good chorus. Mm hmm I forget who led it, but he was active in that. He was singing. Yeah. Uh huh. Did he do any acting or anything like that? No, he. he that was his, his career, but not in dancing. I remember you made a movie. Yeah. That was a, early on in his career. It was made for the government about how retired people should spend their money and, or save their money or something like that. Uh huh. I think I have that right here. So was that part of his work, acting, or was yeah. that just well, he, volunteer? When he was. 60, is that right? Yeah. So, he worked for, a, by then he worked, was working for a national organization that had to do with fair housing. Ah. Oh. And they went out of business because, I guess it was when Reagan was elected. Uh-huh. And, um, so some, his brother was an actor, and so he knew about the business. Uh huh. And then somehow or other, some, uh, what do you call it, agent approached him and asked if he wanted to try out for something, and he did. And he was an actor for the rest of his life. So that was a second or third career for At him? At least, yeah. <laughs> At least. Um, what about? Um, anti-war activities. Didn't you, didn't you go to Chicago? He went to Chicago. He was, he, yeah. He was the big shot, the anti-war, early anti-war stuff. But why did you, why did he go to Chicago? Well, he went to Chicago originally because he was uh, delegate to the 1968 Se Democratic Convention. Uh-huh. Did you go too? Mm hmm How was that? It was terrible. I helped kids off the street who had been hit over the head by the policeman. Mm -hmm. So uh, we saw fascism in action. That was really bad news. Mm -hmm. I was reminded of when I saw the, the people on, you know, the other day. Today, you mean down in Wall Street? Yeah. I was wishing I was there. Uh. So it reminded you of Chicago in 68? Well, just a lot of, I mean, there was demonstrations all the time. Yeah. And, and we used to go to New York and be in different parades and stuff. So there were demonstrations against the Vietnam War? Yeah. Seems to me there were also some demonstrations against going into Iraq. Demonstrating in Yonkers. We were organizing something. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Always organizing something. <laughs> it was one thing or another. Yeah. Against war, against injustice. Um, you also had, have a son named Paul. That's right. Okay, so... Um, how old is he now? He just turned 60. Oh, congratulations. Um, uh, what did you think about his experience in school in Hastings? Um, well, he was a, a difficult student. And um, so I can't blame, I can't blame the his problems on the school. But I think very early on, he resented the fact that he, he sat on the floor and the teacher didn't, told him he couldn't do that. I think it was in kindergarten. And he never got over it. I'm just kidding. Oh. I mean, it's probably true, but I wouldn't write that up exactly that way. <laughs> but didn't he, all the kids sit on the floor in kindergarten? No, they sat in chairs with their hands on the desk, folded. 
Hmm. I don't remember. Oh, your kids didn't go to Hastings School? Yes, they did. But they're younger than Paul. So you didn't think that, that, that it was, are you saying it was a sort of fudgy I'd, experience? I'd say he and the school were not exactly congenial. Okay. I mean, what about his friends? What did you think about the friends that he well, had? Well, I don't think they were very congenial with the school either. Mm -hmm. oh. was those times, I'm uh -huh. part of it was anti-war stuff in the lab. But... Uh, You know, we used to get into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. We used to help get him out of it. <laughs> uh, what was going on in the community at the time uh, in oh, terms of a, kids? I th think a lot of people had the same experience. Mm -hmm. It was behavior, mm -hmm. a protest. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anything else? going on? Did you, did you think there was any difference between Hastings schools and say Dobbs or Ardsley or Irvington? I'm sure I did but I don't remember it. Uh -huh. I just wonder if it was specific to Hastings. But it was the 60s, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It certainly was. Um... What kind, were you, do you remember, or were you involved in the, I remember there was a drug council at the time? Did you know any, Hello? any, uh, were you involved in that? I don't think so. No? I don't that. Okay, and what, was there anything for kids to do? I mean, activities, or? I'm sure there were. But that was not something Paul did, or it was? You don't know. Um, and during the... So let's talk sort of generally about the village. In what ways did it change over the period of time? Because how long did you live in Hastings? Do you remember? Well, from 51 to, to 2003. That's a long time. Okay. It's so over fifty years. It's over fifty years. What yeah. kinds of changes did you are you were you aware of? Well, I'm talked before about the you know the, going from democratic to I mean Republican to Democratic. Because mm -hmm. the Republicans got back in in our time, right? What got back in? The Republicans. Oh. It's, what's his name? Sheldon Wagner? Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, but anyway, um, what was your question? What well, whether other changes took place by the time you, you know, in the time oh, well, that you well, lived there. Uh, I think it became much more liberal. Became more liberal? I think. Mm -hmm. It may have reverted back to not being so liberal. And But there were always issues. I mean, the, a lot of land use issues that were Mm -hmm. that, parks and stuff. Any um, any religious religious or cultural different changes? Oh, it became is it twenty five percent Jewish? I don't know. Very but large Jewish population. There's a bigger Jewish and population. We were the fifth Jewish family. What's going on? <laughs> I just visited. A lot of phone calls. Economic differences time. that you can think of that took no, place yeah. during the time you were there? Are there differences in no, she's still in time. economics? She will call you back. Is that Harriet? That's still Harriet. Do you want to speak oh, to her? I'll, I'll talk to her. One second. Well, wait, let's turn this off. Oh, yeah. Um. Anyway, just a couple of questions more. Um, I was asking you whether you thought there were economic changes. Yes, I, I think it got to be a much richer town. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we arrived there, it was, you know, the union was a big 
factor. Mm -hmm. But it was all on its way out. Uh huh. And, and there so, are a lot of poor people connected to the factories and stuff. Uh huh. And eventually, a lot of them move out. When it closed, is that what you yeah. mean? When Anaconda closed? It's certainly now not a factory town. No, <laughs> not a factory town. So you've seen the community change in terms of the income of the people yeah, who live the, there. Is that what you the mean? The income and the outlook and, and uh -huh. the religion, actually. And religion. Uh -huh. And I, I wonder what about the kinds of jobs that people have. Did you notice any differences? I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do, do you... Um, did your attitude change toward Hastings in any way over the years? Yeah, I think I... I mean, I think early on I sort of had a very romantic view of it. And uh -huh. I sort of grew out of it in a way. Why? I just wasn't as involved, I guess. Uh-huh. You mean as time went by? Yeah. Uh-huh. So... Do you have any concluding statements to make about your experience there that you'd like to share with me? Oh, or with the historical... It was largely a positive experience. Mm -hmm. And there's... I think Hastings has many points that are very beautiful, and it's uh, where we live certainly is one of the more beautiful mm -hmm. settings, especially being able to look at the river all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think our little neighborhood was unique mm -hmm. in, its hey, in its heyday. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Some interesting characters. Mm -hmm. I think of the places to live we, was probably a pretty good choice. Okay. I'm sure I'll think of other things as... Well, I think if you're, if you're feeling that it was a good choice, that's a nice place to end the conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Well, I'm very impressed with your abilities as an interviewer. Thanks.